welcome. Uh, just a reminder, church council will meet right after worship. Uh, Marine Christian School Board of Education. And uh, there will not be DYC today. Am I to assume Faithful Friends is not meeting? Okay, no DYC or Faithful Friends today. Uh, Wednesday, who we are, continues. Uh, we're in the area of confession and absolution. Uh, if you're needing a review or an up update, uh, welcome. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. And uh, then, uh, of course, Saturday, Yom Kippur. What's Yom Kippur? What? Day of Atonement. The holy day of the Jewish New Year. And uh, the New Year was last week, right? Rosh Hashanah. A lot of things happening in the New Year in Jerusalem, in Israel, starting with Rosh Hashanah and, uh, and coming up to Yom Kippur. Um, what took place in history on Yom Kippur? Not a, biblical history. There was the Yom Kippur War. The Yom Kippur War. And like he's buried in Grant's tomb. Okay. Uh, and there they are again. You know, war is ravaging through Israel. And, uh, but Yom Kippur was a surprise attack by all the Arab, surrounding Arab nations around Jerusalem, around Israel. A surprise because they knew the Jews would be in the day of repentance and day of atonement. So, uh, a little bit of history and uh, a modern day uh, news items as well. Uh, so next Sunday, Sunday School for All Ages, worship celebration, and are we going to do DYC and yes. and, okay, and yeah. Faithful Friends next week? We had to cancel because our little baby's sick and needs to be Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, today, Lynn and Susie, you get to stand. <laughs> Thursday, Betty Everwine has a birthday, and Saturday, Olivia Dallimore has a birthday. And yesterday, was it yesterday? Uh, no, it was... Um, Today? No. It was, if, 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 we're, if we're thinking of the same thing, I, it would be um, Wednesday. Wednesday. Is that... Um. Yeah. Okay. But we missed it last week. Is that what we're talking about? No, we're not. <laughs> okay. So we'll go to Wednesday because it was a happy belated birthday for Bronson. Yes. He failed to put it in the it, it was not in the bulletin last oh. week, so we apologize. One shot. <laughs> so now. Was it yesterday or today? Today. Today, thank you. <laughs> today, we have a new birth. Oh! oh. Aria Luann. And I think it's appropriate that the Lou of the Luann is L-O-U. Yeah. L-O-U, yes. For Papa Lou. So, anyway, uh, a new addition to the Horn family. Yay. So we celebrate that new birthday. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 63. We got Lynn's got his hand up. Yes. Lutifus, yeah. 
<laughs> yes, it's been on the bulletin board for... I'll have tickets next Sunday. You'll have tickets next week. Okay, all right, very good. Little Fist coming up, middle of October. So, there you are. Call to worship this morning. Psalm 63, please stand for the call to worship. Oh God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Thus, I have seen you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because of your loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you. Let's do just that. Let's praise the Lord. For 
the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now you may stand and continue to worship. He descended into hell. 
the third day he rose again from the dead. He is ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing and turn in your Bibles to our first lesson. Our New Testament lesson is written in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 11 through 15. Hebrews 6, 11 through 15. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence, so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply you. And so, having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. Our gospel lesson this morning is written in Luke 15, verses 11 through 20. where we read in Jesus' name. And he said, A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate with loose living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country. And he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country. And he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating. And no one was giving anything to him. But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread? But I am here dying with hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he got up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I'll invite our ushers to come forward and wait upon the bird titles and all things.
I invite you to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 40. share the first five verses of Psalm 40. The focus this morning in our message is on verse 1, but I want to go through the first five verses together with you. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. How blessed is the man who has made the Lord his trust and has not turned to the proud, not to those who lapse into falsehood. Many, O oh Lord my God, are the wonders which you have done and your thoughts toward us. There is none to compare with you. If I would declare and speak of them, they would be too numerous. To count. There's a lot in those five verses, isn't there? If I would declare and speak of all that the Lord has done for us, they'd be too numerous to count. But then we have to back up. We have to back up to verses two and three. This is just kind of a prelude message, if you will. But two and three are very significant, very important. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. That one verse really describes where we have been, where we were, maybe even where we are today. We're in a miry pit, but the Lord reaches down and lifts us up. You know, I always look at the, the miry pit. Uh, I, I envision the pit uh, having some water sprayed on it. It's kind of like uh, at the Naval Academy, there's a, toward graduation, there's a, 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 a pillar that's greased. And, and in, order, in order to complete the week, complete the process, the plea class has to to get up that grease pillar. Someone has to get to the top. It's a team effort. But you can envision that slimy pit and you try to get out and you can't. Your hands just keep sliding down. You can't do it on your own. But the Lord lifts down his hand he takes ours and lifts us up out of that pit. And not only lifts us up, he sets our feet on firm, solid rock. That's what salvation is all about. And he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. So when we're saved, we have a new song. No longer do we need to worry about that miry pit. Our feet are planted firmly on the, the rock, the rock of salvation, and we have a new song in our mouth, a 
new song in our heart. So, all of that being said, how many of you have ever been impatient? Okay, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to narrow this down. How many of you have been impatient with parents? How many of you have been impatient uh, with your spouse? Well, those hands just really shine. How about with a family member? Impatient with a family member. <laughs> Impatient with a boss. Impatient with a teacher. <laughs> Impatient with a pastor. Uh oh. Uh, got a couple of solid ones back there. <laughs> but my question is have you ever been impatient? With God. Mm. Do you ever want something so badly that you get frustrated when God seems to just be taking his time? We live in a society that is geared toward instant gratification. We've come to expect things instantly. We have fast food, fast computers, fast cars, fast everything. We have credit cards that we can immediately purchase all the furniture we need. Right? I guess that's one of the biggest challenges with our economy today. Credit cards are maxed out behind payments. Even from God, we expect instant results. And we expect instant results with no regard or appreciation for what God desires of us. What His ultimate purpose is, or what His perfect timing may be. We simply do not like to wait. I've mentioned in days past, and I probably got it in the military, having to wait in line, wait in the chow line. <laughs> Hurry up and wait. I don't like to wait at the gas station. I don't like to wait at the bank. I don't like to wait at the checkout at the grocery store. I don't like to wait. And we don't like to be disciplined. We don't like to be denied of comforts, our rights, or anything else we think ought to be ours. We can so easily act like spoiled brats, holding out our hands, for what we never deserved in the first place. Sometimes we want something so urgently that in our prayers, we sound as if we're giving orders to God. Do it now, we demand. Lord, we need this now. Sometimes we even dare quote his scriptures at him in an arrogant attempt to get what we want. I don't believe God responds to such prayers. In fact, I think He reserves His blessings when we are being arrogant, impatient, and demanding. Our God who created the universe created our very selves, is in charge. We discussed his being in charge a couple of weeks ago. We are not in charge. God 
is in charge. All God has to do is withhold his breath from us. Ah, oh, isn't that what he did? He breathed into Adam. And Adam had life. All God has to do is withhold his breath from us. And we are gone. We are here by the grace of our loving Heavenly Father. Patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Whenever we are impatient, we are manifesting the opposite of the Holy Spirit. In essence, we are actually manifesting an attribute of Satan himself. Should I repeat that? <laughs> Patience is a fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Whenever we are impatient, we are manifesting the opposite of the Holy Spirit. And in essence, we are actually manifesting an attribute of Satan himself. God is not in a hurry and we better get used to it. The only time the Bible portrays God in a hurry, the only time, and we shared that in our gospel lesson this morning, is when He, the Father, rushes out, runs out to meet the prodigal son who has finally returned home. The only time. But that's just a beautiful, loving picture of God our Father. He runs to us. That is the only time God hurries when a sinner repents. Prodigal son had to repent. He took advantage of his position as a son. He wanted all for himself, his part of the inheritance, and he went away to do his own thing. And he came to a point in his life where he realized he had it better off in the pigsty of his father than where he was right then. Prodigal son was in a miry pit. A slimy pit. And when he went back to the Father, he confessed to the Father. And he, even before he confessed, he saw the Father running out to meet him, to greet him. Every other time in Scripture, other than that one time, God is depicted as a God of patience, a God of waiting, a God who is not in a hurry, even though we may be. Why? Because he's fully in charge of everything. He's not worried. He's not in a rush because nothing is beyond his control. Even when the people of God were on the banks of the Red Sea with the Egyptian army in hot pursuit, God made Moses and the grumbling Israelites wait. We sometimes think, well, you know, they couldn't really have been grumbling a whole lot. You know, they've only been uh, in prison, so to speak to the Egyptians for 400 years, and now they're set free. They're on their way out of Egypt, and they should have been rejoicing on just the ability to be able to leave Egypt. But turn with me to Exodus 14. They left Egypt, but Pharaoh changed his mind, remember? Exodus 14, 
verse 10. Pharaoh is chasing after them now. In verse 10, as Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they became very frightened. So the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Is it because there have been no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt, saying, Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And we're going to see the children of Israel. You read through Exodus and Numbers, you'll see the children of Israel constantly complaining, constantly grumbling, constantly wanting to go back to Egypt. But God made Moses and the grumbling Israelites wait. All night, Scripture tells us in Exodus 14, 21, the Lord had drove back the sea. All night. They had to stay there and wait. It wasn't until the next day that the miracle was complete. And Moses and the Israelites were allowed to pass through the sea to the other side. Cross the Red Sea on dry ground. is one of the most marvelous scenes in the Bible. God could have opened up the Red Sea instantly, of course, but instead, even as the Egyptians were descending upon them, God made his people wait all night long. He made them wait, learn to trust him in the process. He made them wait and learn to trust Him in the process. Anytime God finds you impatiently grumbling, you can pretty much guarantee He's going to make you wait. Maybe the very fact you're grumbling triggers the wait time. Maybe a day week, maybe a decade, however long it takes for you to stop grumbling, repent, humbly recognize that God is God, and you are not. God will give you one of three answers, yes, no, not now. Remember, God is not in a hurry. He has plans for you that you know nothing about. Learn to trust Him. Learn to wait patiently for His perfect timing. And it actually can be fun. You may not think that, but it can be fun. It's an adventure. Trusting God in everything makes life more exciting, even in the challenging times. It causes you to anticipate, be expectant. We heard a prelude this morning, come expecting Jesus. To be expectant about what God is going to accomplish in you and through you through his time, through this time. Not only will he answer your prayers, he will do great things in you and through you beyond anything you could ask for a thing. And that resonates to me as a part of a verse from Ephesians, which will be our benediction this morning. But as we prepare now to come to his table, 
We need to reflect, and I encourage you to reflect on what God has accomplished for us through His Son. Because of His sacrifice, He made a way for us now and also for eternity. Coming to His table is a time of reflection. And He invites us to come to His table.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had blessed it, when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also when they had supped, he took the cup. <coughs> and when he blessed it, he gave it to them saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. All of you drink of it in remembrance of me. As we receive the bread, I ask that you all receive and hold the bread until all have received and we can partake together. Same with the cup. As you know Jesus as your Savior, we invite you to come to his table and to receive from him. Very center section of each tray with the cup contains grape juice for those of you who would prefer grape juice uh, as we commune. Give you all glory and praise. 
Lord, continue to undergird them. Continue to have them look to you. And we thank you for all the churches and Christian organizations that are on site. Just being your hands and feet, helping them through this process. We continue to pray for our nation. We pray for Israel. Lord, that you would keep them steadfast and firm. Lord, they have experienced in the past attacks on your people, on your nation. And you have brought them through. So we ask, Lord, that you would do the same even now. We pray for the election coming up, less than a month away, an election that is unlike any election in our history. We pray for Christians, those who know you personally, especially, not just in name, but know you personally. To look at the heart of the issues. To look at the biblical foundations of those issues. And Lord, we've mentioned before that every human being is imperfect. Jesus was perfect as he walked this earth. But we as Christians need to stand firm on the foundations of Scripture and vote accordingly. Lord, speak to our hearts through your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit is our guide. He's not only our comforter, but he is our guide into truth. So we look to him. I ask, Lord, that you bless our meetings that take place. Continue to guide our congregation in the direction that you would have us to go. We thank you for everyone who serves on the boards and committees and Lord, for each person who is, is a part of coming together, encouraging one another, celebrating with one another, enjoying one another's presence, most of all your presence in our midst. We thank you for the prayer that you've given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the benediction. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever.